Hello everyone, Dr Polaris here. Although today's Australia is famous for being a land dominated by marsupials, albeit with a notable diversity of endemic rodents and bats, it is also well known for being home to the monotremes. These basal egg-laying mammals, represented by the platypus and four species of echidna, have a substantial history on the continent, being present here since at least the early Cretaceous. The ancestors of the monotremes diverged from other mammals a very long time ago, probably during the early Jurassic, around 186 million years ago, although older estimates stretching back into the late Triassic have also been proposed as well. At present, the most ancient monotreme fossils stem from the early Cretaceous of what is now southern Australia, circa 123 million years ago, suggesting that these animals evolved in the cool, temperate forests of the Antarctic Circle. During the Mesozoic, monotremes were significantly more widespread and diverse than they are today, with late Cretaceous and Paleocene fossils having been found in Patagonia. This indicates that these animals were also present in Antarctica as well, which was ice sheet free at this time, and covered in temperate forests somewhat like those still found in Tasmania, New Zealand and parts of southern Chile today. As these continents were still either connected or in close proximity, monotremes could easily travel across the south polar region that formed the last chunk of old Gondwana. However, Recent finds in Australia dating to the Middle Cretaceous have revealed just how diverse ancient monotremes actually were in a time long before the first marsupials showed up. As I've already covered the evolutionary history of these animals before, this video will be focusing on the ancient ecosystem in which these recent fossils were found, namely the Grimman Creek Formation near Lightning Ridge, straddling the border of Queensland and New South Wales. These largely sandstone and mudstone deposits have been dated to the Cenomanian stage of the Middle Cretaceous, between roughly 100 and 96 million years ago. At this time, Australia was located farther to the south than it is today, being still connected to Antarctica. During the Cenomanian, global temperatures were significantly warmer than today, with sea levels reaching their highest extent during the last 600 million years. Large areas of continental shelf were covered by hot, shallow seas, with Australia being no exception. The Eromanga Sea almost bisected the continent at this time, subsuming much of what is now Queensland and Central Australia. On a quick tangent, if you want to look up information about the Eromanga Sea, all I can say is keep the safe search on, otherwise you'll find something quite different. The coastal regions that bordered this ancient seaway possessed a warm temperate climate and consisted of extensive river deltas, lagoons and freshwater swamps. These were productive ecosystems that teemed with life, although the Grimman Creek formation fossils are often pretty fragmentary, especially when compared to the slightly younger Upper Winton formation, which preserved the relatively complete remains of multiple large dinosaurs, particularly sauropods. Although no fossil plant matter has been uncovered from Grimman Creek, we can extrapolate the paleoflora of this site from the more detailed records from the Winton Formation. The riverine forests here were probably composed of Araucaria conifers, cypresses, laurels and cycads, with ferns, horsetails and angiosperms making up the understory. The swamps, rivers and lagoons were inhabited by three species of lungfish, one of which, the genus Neoceratodus, is still around today in modern Australia along with freshwater turtles of the family Chelidae. The small crocodiliform Isisfordia also shared these waterways, measuring just over a metre or three feet three inches long, and possessed a relatively elongated snout, suggesting a diet of fish and other small vertebrates. The presence of these ectothermic animals indicates a warm climate with average annual temperatures of at least 17 degrees Celsius, perhaps comparable to modern Brisbane, Six species of mammal were also native to Grimman Creek, all of which were monotremes. This fascinating fact was only elucidated this year, when a study was published by Tim Flannery et al. that described three new species of monotreme from the site. These included the basal and tiny shrew-like Parvopallus, which was probably a terrestrial insectivore, as well as two genera that were more closely related to modern monotremes in the clade Ornithorhynchoidea. These were Opalios and Daragara, both of which still possessed teeth and probably lacked fully formed beaks, although their jaw structure was quite similar to the living platypus. As only teeth and jaw fragments are known, we don't know if these animals were semi-aquatic or terrestrial, although the former is more likely in the case of Daragara, 
which was found to be closer to modern monotremes. It is considered possible that both the platypus and echidna evolved from a semi-aquatic common ancestor, which may have resembled Daragara, although the divergence probably took place in the early Cenozoic. Other more basal monotremes from the site include Colicodon, with its specialised crushing molars, the relatively large 50 cm or 20 inch long Steropodon, and the even larger Sturtodon, which is one of the biggest Mesozoic mammals, being at least a metre long, and may have been a generalist badger-like animal. The fact that no other mammal groups have been found at Grimman Creek and the Winton Formation is very interesting, perhaps indicating that monotremes were the most diverse mammal lineage in Australia during the Cretaceous, much as marsupials are today. Non-avian dinosaurs were also pretty diverse in Cenomanian Lightning Ridge, although as stated earlier, their remains are often pretty fragmentary. Unlike at the more northerly Winton Formation, Sauropods seem to have been rare at this site, with only a single tooth having been found so far. Several non-avian theropods were also present, but these two are mostly represented by a few scraps of bone. These included a potential noosaurid, as well as two megaraptorans. One of these, the somewhat dubious Rapator, is based on a single metacarpal from the left hand, while the as yet unnamed lightning claw specimen is known from parts of the lower arm, claws, lower leg, part of the hip, and pieces of rib. These would have been the apex predators of the region, with other large non-megaraptoran theropods being rare in Cretaceous Australia. They would have had access to a wide prey base, consisting of many Ornithischian species, although yet again these are based on scrappy remains. These include the possible Rhabdodontomorph Fostoria, as well as the small ornithopod Weewarasaurus, in addition to isolated osteoderms, which hint at the presence of ankylosaurs, perhaps similar to Cunbarasaurus, along with the better known animals of the Winton Formation, these are currently the youngest Cretaceous vertebrates from Australia, with the fossil record going silent around 92 million years ago, leaving us in the dark concerning the makeup of the continent's faunal communities at the time of the KPG extinction event. Perhaps this is what triggered the relative decline of the monotremes with the marsupial newcomers moving into their old terrestrial niches during the early Eocene. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the famous but still relatively mysterious late Jurassic theropod Ornitholestes. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.